Hello and welcome back. In today's video, we are going through Art of Electronics, exercise 2.24. Now, this question is a little bit long. For this question, we are looking at a current source with an NPN transistor. And the circuit for this question is given in figure 2.96. The question is divided into four parts with a number of different questions included within them. The first question is what is I load and what is the output compliance, assuming VBE is 0.6. Then part B, if the beta varies from 50 to 100 for collector voltages within the output compliance range, how much will the output current vary? There are two effects that we need to consider for this. Part C, if VBE varies according to the equation given on the screen, basically early effect, how much will the load current vary over the compliance range? And finally, what is the temperature coefficient of the output current, assuming that beta does not vary with temperature? And second part of part D is what is the temperature coefficient of output current assuming that beta increases from its nominal value of 100 by 0.4% per degree C. Now learning to design beautiful circuits, schematics and PCBs is only part of the journey. If you want to bring your designs to life, you need PCBWay. PCBWay is a high quality manufacturer of PCBs and they can assemble the PCBs for you as well. The order process is very simple. You upload your Gerber files and they will give you a quote very quickly. One of the things I really like about PCBWay is their shared projects, which is a community driven platform where makers can share their electronic projects with other people. I also share my projects here. So if you ever wanted to order one of the PCBs that I've designed on video, you can do that through PCBWay and their website. So again, a huge thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and making this content possible. Now back to the video. Let's just quickly look at the circuit and go from there. We have a NPN based current source with a 1.5K resistor over here, 1.6K resistor here, and 8.2K resistor over here. And our load is connected to the collector of the transistor. The power supply is 10 volts. And obviously, we are starting with assuming that we have a 0 0.6 volt drop over here. So first of all, let's calculate the voltage at point A. So A is, or VA is going to be equal to 10 times 1.6 divided by 1.6 plus 8.2. So this tells us we're going to get 1.6 volts on junction VA over here. And if you have 1.6 volts over here, we're going to have approximately one volt over here. If you want to use the 0.3, you can do. I'm just going to call it one volt for now. And we have a 1.5K resistor over here and a one volt across it. So if you use Ohm's law, V equals IR, we know the voltage, we know the resistance. We can calculate the current that's going through the resistor. So one volt divided by 1,500, and that is equal to 0 0.6 milliamps. What we are doing when we look at this circuit is ignoring the current that's going down in here. So there is going to be a little bit of current going into this path. But we're going to ignore it and basically assume that the current going down this path through these two resistors is going to be significantly more than the current that's going into there. If we do consider that current, then this voltage might be a little bit higher, but we don't really care at the moment. So we have a fixed current of 0 0.6 milliamps going down here, and IC is equal to IE plus IB. Obviously, we're saying IB is very small. That means IE is equal to 0 0.6 milliamps. So we're going to have 0 0.6 milliamps through the load. And this will be fixed and independent of what the load is up to an extent. And that extent is called the output compliance. And by just looking at this circuit, we have calculated the I load or the current through the load. And that is the solution to the first part of question A. For the second part, we need to look at the output compliance, basically this part over here. So first of all, I should really explain what output compliance is. We've been through this in one of the exercises before, but to summarize, a current source can provide constant current to the load only over some finite load voltage. When you go beyond that load voltage, obviously you're not able to maintain that constant current that you need to for the load. If this limitation wasn't there, obviously you'd be providing infinite power, which is not possible. So essentially, 
The output voltage range for which the current source behaves well is called the output compliance. Now to look at output compliance, we need some understanding of our transistor itself. So transistors will typically have some sort of saturation voltage. So that is the voltage drop across this transistor, the VCE drop, when it is fully turned on. And that is typically in the range of 0.1 to 0.3 volts. We know that VE is fixed to 1 volt roughly. Therefore, we can calculate the output compliance as V supply minus V sat minus VE, which gives us a voltage of 8.9 volts. So the output compliance range is from 10 volts down to 1.1 volts. So the load has an output compliance of 8.9 volts. And obviously, if you look at the voltage range, that's from 10 to 1.1. The load would not be able to have anything less than 1.1 volt across it. Obviously, from this voltage, and looking at a 0.6 milliamp, we can calculate the load resistance range as well. But we don't need to do that for this question. So part B of this question says, if beta varies from 50 to 100 for collector voltages within the output compliance range, how much will the output current vary? And the question gives us a clue that there are two effects to consider. So I think effect one that the question is referencing is the variation in the base current. And effect two, I think, is the early effect. Now I'll go through both of these for the solution. First, let's look at the base current. So IC is equal to beta times IB. We want to keep IC set to a fixed voltage. In this case, it was 0 0.6 milliamps, but let's say 1 milliamp. Therefore, to compensate for beta variation, current IB will need to rise. So as beta varies, so it goes up or down, obviously IB would need to compensate to keep IC the same. So let's look at case one where beta is equal to 100. So IB, which is the current going into the base, is equal to IC divided by beta, which is equal to 1 milliamp, divide by 100, which gives us 0 0.01 milli or 410 microamps. Now looking at case two, when beta is equal to 50, IB is equal to IC over beta, same as before, is equal to 1 milliamp over 50, which gives us 0 0.02 milli. So you can see it's gone up to 20 microamps. So what this is telling us is that as beta varies, IB will change to compensate. So if the beta goes down, we need more base current. Obviously for the question, we need to calculate how much the output current will vary. So let's continue looking at this to calculate that. So we know IE is equal to IB plus IC. Basically what that is saying is the current that's over here is a summation of this current plus this current over there. So that's IC and that's IB, and that's IE. That's the emitter current, the collector current, and the base current over here. We also know that IC is equal to IB times beta, and we can rewrite that so that we make IB the subject. So IB is equal to IC divided by beta, and if you make the IB the subject in this equation, IB is equal to IE minus IC. So I've just given references to these equations. What we're going to do is substitute number three into number four. So sub three into number four, which we get IE is equal to, and we replace the IC with IB beta plus IB. So essentially we've replaced this with this over here. Now we can simplify that a little bit so that we get IE is equal to IB1 plus beta. And if we rearrange that to make IB the subject, we get IB is equal to IE divided by 1 plus beta. Now I'm going to substitute number 1 
into this equation over here. So taking this part and replacing this. So IC divided by beta is equal to IE 1 plus beta. Now if you rearrange this to get IC by itself, we basically get IC is equal to IE beta over 1 plus beta. So if you look back to the question, we need to calculate how the output current will vary if the beta varies. So obviously we've got output current over here and we've got beta over here as well. So we basically plug in the numbers for beta equals 100 and beta equals 50. So let's do beta equals 50 first and assume that IE is fixed. So we have IC is equal to IE 50 over 51. So 50 divided by 51 is equal to 0 0.98. And if we do the beta case for 100, and IE again is fixed, we get IC is equal to IE 100 over 101. So 100, 101 is equal to 0 0.99. So you can see that the current or the collector current or the load current varies by 1% if the beta changes from 50 to 100. For the second part of the question, we're going to look at the early effect. And early effect or base width modulation means that the collector current or the current through this junction over here will change its value as VCE changes. VCE is the voltage over here. Even if VBE, so this voltage, is kept constant and IB is kept constant. So that's the current that's going into this junction over here. So for early effect, there is an equation that you should learn, which is IC is equal to IC naught 1 plus VCE over VA, where VA is the early effect voltage. And we're going to assume that it's 50 volts, which is a typical voltage that we can assume for the early effect. So let's start by looking at when beta is equal to 50 and we have a 5K load. So this is just an example. Without the early effect, our IB is equal to IE 1 plus beta, which is 13.5 microamps. IC naught is equal to IB beta. So we know beta is 50. We know IB is 13.5. We get IC naught of 675 microamps. So the voltage across the load or V load is equal to IC times R load. So we have IC of 675 micro times 5000, which equals 3.375 volts. VC, which is the voltage at the collector junction, is equal to the power supply, which is 10 volts, minus the voltage across the load, which is 3.375 volts. So that gives us a collector voltage of 6.625 volts. We know VE was equal to approximately one volt. So therefore we can calculate VCE is equal to 5.6 volts approximately. Obviously if you consider all the digits is slightly different. So we get 5.6 volts as this voltage. We get 3.375 over here and we get this voltage as one. We see all of that roughly adds up to 10. Now, if we include early effect, IC is equal to IC naught 1 plus VCE divided by VA. So our VCE we have as 5.6. We have VA as 50 volts. If you plug in those numbers, so 5.6 divided by 50 gives us 0 0.112. So IC is equal to IC naught. And in the brackets, we have 1.112. We had IC naught was equal to 675 microamps. So if you calculate that, so 0 0.000675 times 1.112, we get a collector current of 751 microamps. So early effect 
takes the collector current from 675 to 751. Now if you do the same calculations for a beta of 100, we would get 682 for IC naught, and for the second IC, we would get 757 microamps. So I don't want to make this video too long, so I'll go through question C and question D in a second video. But in this video, uh, I think we've been through part A and part B in quite a lot of detail. So essentially, beta is not a constant. So as beta varies significantly between transistors, even for the same transistor over diff operating conditions, such as temperature or the collector emitter voltage or the collector current, a simple current source that directly relies on a fixed beta will have a variable output current. So it's not as fixed as you would think it is. And that's due to variations in the component and the beta value. Obviously in this circuit design, we aim to minimize the variation by establishing or by creating a stable current in the IE. So this current will basically counteract some of the effect of the variation we get due to beta. So even if we aim for a constant emitter current to stabilize the collector current against beta variations, the fact that IC, the collector current, is related to the emitter current by a factor of beta over 1 plus beta means that some variation will still occur as the beta or the gain for the transistor changes. So that's the first effect that we looked at. Further, the early effect reminds us that the collector current is not perfectly independent of the collector emitter voltage or the VCE voltage. So as the beta changes, it can lead to a different operating point, so that's VCE, which in turn causes the collector current to change even if the beta is controlled. So that is basically the effect two that we were looking at. So I think what the question is trying to get to is that we need to consider these effects in NPN transistor-based current sources as they create some variation that we may not be expecting. So to design a truly stable current source, we need to consider both the direct impact of beta variations and the indirect impact through the early effect, as we analyzed in the question for part B. So I think we, we may look at some more advanced current sources in the future on this channel, especially those with some feedback that can help to minimize the sensitivity to beta variation and early effect, which means that we'll get a much more stable load current. So that's all I have to share with you today. I will upload another video for part C and D. I don't want to make this video too long. So thank you for so thank you for watching. See you next time.